Okay, good morning everyone. So today I will um, <laughs> share with you our experience with cloud computing through the implementation of one of the services that Amazon Web Services is providing called AWS Batch. And so this, this tool has enabled us to provide a more reliable and cost-effective uh, tool to subset and aggregate our graded data set that we offer for Amos. So yeah, so I'm Sebastian Mancini. I work for the Australian Integrated Marine Observing System. I want to acknowledge the work from our web developers and also the, the other project officer, Kate Reed, that has been doing a lot of work for our help desk queries. And this work is also about uh, providing more information to the users. So the outline of the talk will be talking very briefly about IMOS because most of you know about it, the greedy data set that we are offering right now uh, via the new architecture that we've implemented, so using cloud computing and AWS Batch. Some time to talk about the monitoring and user statistics from the, since the beginning of the implementation of the tool, and then some ideas for future improvement. So the first one is about IMOS, so IMOS is the Australian Integrated Marine Observing System. It started in 2007 and we got just renewed for funding for the next five years, so we will see more, us, more of us coming. Um, we've got all those different type of platforms that are collecting a little bit like so see different type of data, biological, physical, biogeochemical data from ships, moorings, AUV gliders, and also satellites, remote sensing. And the 11 facility is the Australian Ocean Data Network, which is in charge of the data management of all this data that is collected and making it available through our main portal is the portal.aogn.org.au, that's our main window through the data, and all the data collected by IMOS is freely accessible and, and discoverable through that portal. Um, yeah, so today we're going to focus mostly on the IMOS graded data set, so we've got a, a different range of type of data that we pro provide. We've got some uh, satellite SST, sea surface temperature product, ocean color that are tailored to our Australian waters, satellite altimetry, coastal radar product around Australia, and recently we've got some also climatology and bathymetry products. So it's a wide range of, um, of greedy data sets. And so what, what does our user want? Pretty close to what we've heard already before. So they want, uh, our user wants to visualize the data before they want to download the data. They want to be able to spatially and temporally filter the data before they get to download it. Most of them want NetCDF file, that's okay. Recently, we've got a lot of uh, other type of users that just want to have, uh, you know, point at a location and say, I want 25 years of, uh, of data at that location. Can you give me that in CSV format? So that's what we provide as well recently. And as we heard, from the previous uh, presentation, most of them don't want to go to the threads catalog and access the threads. That's really for the, the geeky people. Most of, the, most of them want to use the portal. Um, yeah, and so what we've been looking at is also what the user wants, and we've been using Google Analytics for four years now, I think, on, on our portal to track what people are use, uh, visualizing, looking at uh, the facet <coughs> they're using, but also the data set that they are downloading. And so here you see a table of, um, of the most downloaded data set for a period of two and a half years. You can see the top three are more Argo or are mooring data, but then a lot of the satellite data and greedy data set are trusting the top 10, top 20 of the data set. So that's very important to us. And so we've been having tools since yeah, the beginning to subset and aggregate the data. We've been using NCO tools in the past, NetCDF Java library more recently. And our last implementation was using GeoServer implement implementation of web processing service, so one of the OGC service. And, and that, that was very difficult for us because this implementation of GeoServer was uh, unwieldy. The code is very hard to understand. It's also working on only one server. We were having a lot of issues where we wanted to restart the server. We were losing jobs. People were contacting us at the help desk and say, oh, where is my job? Why is, has it failed and, thing, and so on? So we wanted to have a, a better and more reliable um, product. And so that's why we were thinking, OK, why don't we go serverless? What does that mean, serverless? So you probably have heard that already before. So the server details get abstracted away. Servers only run when it's needed. You 
give that back to a company that does it very well. So for us, we use AWS, and then you can focus on what matters. So you focus on the code and the data, and that's our, what we are good at, or we're supposed to be good at. Um, then that's the overview of the implementation we've been having. So that's AWS Batch. So on the left-hand side, you can see the, there's the portal. So a user comes to the portal, does a specially and temporary subset of the data, and that makes a, a WPS request to, to, a, to the tool. So there's an API gateway request handler that is um, setting up a Lambda um, function. So that's very specific to AWS. That's enable us to, um, to run fast scripts to um, interpret the XML request and see, okay, and validate the request. Lambda is usually um, sort of a container to run code. And so you just give your code to AWS and then they, they just um, provide the server that the code will be run on. And that's usually Lambda is only for very fast scripts, for less than a second to a few minutes jobs. And so you don't have to worry about anything about your code. So that's what we do with Lambda, and then the Lambda will validate the, the request and then put a, a job in the queue. Then that's where AWS Batch comes into play, and it's looking at the queue, and then it's going to set up an environment where you will have um, EC2 instance that are going to be spin up with a subset and aggregated code. That's in, for us, it's a Java code. And so then that will go through the request and see, okay, these are all the NetCDF files that I need to grab I need to subset, I need to aggregate, this is what I need to do. And during the job, the, um, what it will do is it will update a status in, in XML about um, where it's up to on the job and we'll put that on an S3 bucket. And this status XML can be um, point at for another Lambda function that can be triggered by a user or an admin of the system. And that can tell them where they are up to in the queue, where the processing job is happening, and so on. So I've got a few slides after to show you that. When the job is finished, the output file is put on the S3 bucket, the user is, uh, is sent an email, and then you can download the data. The data stays there for seven days before it gets uh, deleted. And then AWS Batch or the EC2 instance, just wait for another 10 minutes to see if there's any new jobs. If there's no new jobs, shut down. And, they, and then the, the queue is finished. So that's pretty scalable. You can do as many, as many queues as you want, as many instances as you want. You can have thousands if you want. What we do at the moment, it's only, we have only one user in some extent, it's the portal. We don't want to be flooded by other people doing a WPS request to our, our thing, but that could be um, changed. And then at the moment, we only have one queue, but we do process four jobs at the same time. And we can talk about that after. Uh, yeah. The next one, so a big part of the project was also to improve the way we were monitoring the data. So we, we set up a, like those Lambda functions, but also set up <laughs> web pages where the user can see where they, their jobs is up to. And also our admin can see what's, what's in the queue, what's the running jobs, what's the completed jobs, and you can see a little bit of metadata for each of those jobs. You can see a log file, and then that's where you can get to. Um, the admin can see, okay, this is a job ID, when it has been submitted, what collection it belongs to, what filters have been applied, what's the email address. So if people contact like this, we can see. Usually they don't say what job ID they have and so on. So we can retrace a little bit and investigate what are the problems. The other issue um, or we've been working on is to complete some user statistics of the data. And so we've been using this tool called Sumo Logic. And so that's a tool that it's sitting on top of your logs of all your application. And what it does is ingesting all those logs and provide you sort of SQL-like query on top of those logs that you can use web developers like it for debugging, really. But for managers like me, I, I like those kind of dashboard where you can set up, okay, how many jobs have been submitted, started, completed in the last two days, 24 hours, 15 minutes, two months, and you can see the, the, the actual statistics of, uh, of what's up, what has been happening. And through this information, since the implementation of our AWS patch, so in February, we've got a bit of statistics now of how people have been using it. Um, so we've got 240 users, 
around 40 users per month. Um, we had 1,600 downloads over the entire periods, a peak in June of 350, only 32 failed downloads over that period, mostly not because of batch or restarting servers or everything, it was more about the, our code that was, or files that were not there or not well indexed or things like that. And then the processing time, that's something I've been looking at and it's an interesting uh, study in there that lots of the jobs are just run very quickly but then there's 10% of the job that are running very slowly. And that's because we let people do silly requests on our portal. They can subset or they can say, I want all the, your temperature data, satellite SST over Australia for 25 years, give me that. And then, then it takes four days. And then everybody is waiting and behind the queue. So I think we should stop doing that, but then it's a learning experience. There's not a lot of jobs like that, but it has been happening. But it doesn't fail. It, it goes through, but it doesn't fail. So another aspect of our thing to the, uh, to the cloud was uh, a cost comparison. You know, it, it should have been, yeah, it, it, it is less expensive. So we've been, with a new batch, we've got $80 per month, really, for doing the EC2 spot instances. So that's our unused spot um, or instance. Local storage and Lambda, out of $80, they are probably more $50 of storage, so we, we have capacity there to, uh, to better manage the way we, we, yeah, we did with that. And so normal approach, if you have an instant to instance that you have reserved, so you, you know that you're going to use it for a year, you're going to pay for yeah, that, and that's all, roughly $350, and it can be even up if you, you don't reserve them. Um, yeah, there's other costs associated to it, but they are for both approaches. Um, Go quickly with that. So the other aspect, of course, of it is the vendor lock-in. So we got we're using AWS. So majority of our of our code is um, is written as a generic library. So that's a plus. We can port that somewhere else. But then there's all the specific things that I guess we are using Lambda and, and Batch, and we could have been a bit more generic in the way we've done that. But that's maybe for later. Um, and then some of the components are glued by cloud formation. That's a, an AWS thing, and it would take a little bit of work if we wanted to move to from AWS to somewhere else. I guess we don't want to move from AWS at the moment, so the question is not very asked. And that's my last slide uh, about future improvements. So this experience of cloud computing has been pretty successful. We want to use it for our development of our application stack, the portal, and every things that is associated to that. We want to improve the subsetting and aggregating code, so not having, you know, downloading multiple points at a time uh, and time series at the same time, improve efficiency. Probably want to dig deeper into the system analytics to see if we can maybe set up multiple queues depending on the size of the jobs or different type of users or whatever we want. And then apply batch to other type of data downloads, so like large CSV downloads because we're using GeoServer WFS for most of our big data for moorings, for example, or subsetting GeoTIFF, especially for bathymetry data. So we want to do that. Um, yep, yeah, that's it. That's been today.